Snestruck. If you take a look at the Super Nintendo Video Games price charting website, you'll see the top games listed on there are mostly goofy titles with absolutely insane prices. But with the magic of emulation, for some of these games anyway, we can at least take a look at these games very briefly and see what they actually are. First on this list is Nintendo Power Fest 1994. This is sort of like the Super Nintendo version of Nintendo World Championship cartridges for the NES that were made a few years previous. It's mostly the same deal here, albeit with not nearly as much fanfare. It was a competition held in select department stores across the country, with three objectives. The first one being to finish the first level of the Lost Levels from Mario All-Stars as quickly as possible. The second objective was fastest time in five laps in Mario Kart. And the third was most home runs in a home run derby for Griffey Presents Major League Baseball. These would all add up into one big store, narrowing down to the top eight across the country, and then the top four, down to two, and then finally a winner. The highest score I could find was this dude named Mike Ayarasi, who put up 24,127,300. Nice job. Up, dude. Anyway, 33 copies of the actual cartridge were made, and only two survive today. So yeah, pretty dang rare. Its last eBay price was something around $23,000. Next on the list is Nintendo Campus Challenge, with this contest taking place at colleges across the US back in 1992. Again it's three games and again it's highest accumulative score. First is collecting 50 coins in Mario World, just like Nintendo World Championships for NES. Second is completing two laps in F-Zero, and third is successfully landing on two targets in Pilot Wings. Once again there's only two known copies in existence, and its last known selling price was for only $1000 at a yard sale, and I'm not sure it's ever even been seen on eBay. There's a couple other competition-styled cartridges produced for the purpose of having competitions at Blockbuster Video. The two games were for Donkey Kong Country and Star Fox. Star Fox was the first one to come out in 1993. You get a 5 minute time limit to accumulate as many points as you can on Corneria and the Asteroid Belt levels, which are altered a bit with a few extra rings and stuff to help pile on the points. About 2,000 cartridges were made and they go for between $600 and $700. Then there's the Donkey Kong Country competition, which happened in 1994, so it only features the first Donkey Kong Country game. Again, the goal here is most points and a time limit, so the levels are tweaked a bit to gear the gameplay toward that goal. So there's no treehouse or banana cave in the first level, for instance. This game had about 2,500 copies printed, and again, like Star Fox, it goes for between $600 and $700. Now we move on to Exertainment Mountain Bike Rally slash Speed Racer. I always think that says excrement when I glance at the title. It's probably not the best name for it. Anyway, this game was originally sold in a huge box with a big block thing that attaches to the bottom of your Super Nintendo, which then would connect to the Life Fitness Bike Unit. Good luck finding one of those. Anyway, this is a dual cartridge with the games Mountain Bike Rally and Speed Racer, both compatible with the bike, and both really not all that great. This cartridge goes for $1,500 and way, way more if it's complete in the box. Next there's the Multi-Purpose Arcade Combat Simulator. This was developed for the US Army as a shooting sim, except instead of a Super Scope 6, they developed a replica of a Jaeger AP-74, otherwise known as an M16A2 clone. But yeah, pretty simple gameplay here as you can see, awfully bare bones. Obviously this wasn't sold in stores or anything, but it has popped up on eBay once in a while, selling between $600 and $700. Now these are probably the most well-known rare games. From there we can go into more conventional games like Evo, Hagane, Arrow Fighters. I'm not going to talk about what these games consist of here because this video first and foremost is about high-priced video games. And I have to rant about that for a bit if you don't mind. As most people are aware by now, prices for retro games in general are insane right now. NES, Genesis, N64, Sega Saturn, and especially Super Nintendo. According to the video game's price charting website, the average Super Nintendo cartridge eBay auction has been over 15 Games like Super Mario World, a game that sold millions of copies, goes for an average of $14.50. It seems like there's two reasons for this. Number one, people that grew up with these games now have their own expendable income, so they can do what every generation has done, spend it on recreating their childhood. I do not say that derisively, I'm no different, but let's face it, it's been this way for decades, especially in the United States. For example, our parents' generation has spent tons of money buying back the muscle car they might have had as a teenager, or the comic books they read as a kid or the baseball cards that mom threw away. The number two reason these games are so expensive, despite selling millions of copies, is that not very many people want to get rid of the games that they have, which means that there's not many for sale in the wild. If you want copies of, say, Wild Guns or Harvest Moon or Metal Warriors, you're looking at 200 bucks each on eBay. It's extremely unlikely you're going to find these games at a garage sale or in a bundle or whatever. It seems like people are more likely to realize what they have, look it up on eBay, see the ridiculous prices, and then sell it on there themselves. So is it worth it to pay such an absurd price for one game? Hell no! 
no, in my opinion. It really depends on if you consider yourself a collector or if you just want to play the games. Now, the games I mentioned at the beginning of this video are all legitimately rare, and if you're a serious retro gaming collector, then I gotta say, yeah, any of those would make great pieces in your collection, but as far as stuff like Harvest Moon or Wild Guns or whatever, then well, you gotta do what you gotta do to get your collection together. But a lot of these games really aren't all that rare. If you're in this just to play the games, get a flash cartridge or get a Wii U and play what's available on the virtual console. So yeah, that's the decision you gotta make. Are you a collector, or are you just happy playing the games? Me, I'm just happy playing the games, but if you're a collector, then it's definitely worth checking out some of the legitimately rare games I mentioned earlier on, although don't expect any earth-shatteringly great gameplay or anything like that. 